Okay, cool. We're jumping in this 2020 Jeep Gladiator. Gladiator 8-speed. Okay, well, we're up here somewhere in the mountains driving this thing. This has got the 3.6 Pentastar. 3.6 Pentastar, 285 horsepower and 260 pound-feet of torque. Cool, and it's a, an 8-speed automatic, and is this a ZF? Yep, so German. transmission is a, is a ZF design. But the transmission is uh, um, it's made in a in an FCA facility um, right here in the United States. Okay. No, but I'm oh. I'm Brandon Germis and Brandon I'm the Germis. the brand manager for the the new 2020 Jeep Gladiator. Oh, cool. Brand manager. I mean, you're one of the top <laughs> dogs, man. We can we can suck a lot of information out of you. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Trek here with another exciting trailer accessory review. This one's for your gooseneck trailer. It's from Gen Y Hitches. It's called the Cushion Surge Coupler. Torsion Flex. So it's kind of like a torsion axle on a, on a tra horse trailer. And that inside here are those torsions. And so as this thing flexes, those will move up and down. Gen Y hitches. All you have to do is look at them. They're built like a bulldozer. It's all heavy duty plate metal, making adjustable hitches, pencil hitches, shock absorbing hitches with torsion, like a torsion axle on a horse trailer. These things will last you forever. You cannot find a better built adjustable hitch. Comanche and win the Gladiator. The Gladiator, what I remember, was clear back in the 60s, the original one. What yeah, it came that? out in 1962 for okay. the 1963 model year. Cool. Uh, and obviously that original Gladiator is what we decided to name the new Gladiator after. Yeah. You know, we had, you know, when we were trying to, honestly, it, it kind of took as long, if not longer, to name the truck um, than it did to actually do the design and engineering work for the new Gladiator. <laughs> so, well, you know, we, we've got a pretty, we've got a pretty good um, you know, heritage of, of building Jeep trucks. We pretty right. much, a lot of people don't know it just because we've been out of the market for so long, but we pretty much had a, a Jeep pickup in the market from 1947 all the way up until 1992. So okay. we've had some, a lot of great names over the years, uh, Scrambler, Comanche, of course, Gladiator, uh, J10, J20. So, you know, we kind of looked back in the history book and um, we're like, you know, which of these names really best embodies the new Gladiator? Right. And, you know, we kind of looked at, looked at Comanche and it's like, you know, Comanche, it was a, it was a derivative of the, the XJ Cherokee platform. So it right. wasn't, wasn't really a great off-road truck and it also really, <laughs> wasn't really a great truck in terms of being able to haul and, uh, and tow either. Um, and then Scrambler was just a, just a modified CJ7. Yes, yeah, so I remember the Scrambler that way. The Comanche, I thought was cool, but you know, it looked like the, the Cherokee. Had some different problems with transmissions. You guys got all that stuff worked out. So the last Comanches were actually pretty cool trucks, and I love that four liter, the American. Oh yeah, uh, you can't, you can't, output, you can't yeah. kill a four liter. Yeah, yeah. He's speaking of yeah, this XJ right in front of us. That's a four, he's four liter. Oh, he's got the a right hand drive. Yeah, it's yeah. rare. You know where we're going? Or are we still? Uh, just, I have just no go idea. on this. We're gonna okay. We'll just go. We'll get lost, and everybody else lost. If anybody's dumb enough to follow us, he's, he's lost. So, 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 you know, we looked at Comanche, looked at Scrambler, but then we looked at the original Gladiator and. You know, the original Gladiator was a real capable pickup truck, right? right I mean, you could really haul, you could really tow with it. Um, so, based looking at the characteristics of the new Gladiator, the fact we have best in class 7,650 pounds towing and best in class 1,600 pounds payload, um, and we felt like this was a worthy, the new Jeep pickup was a worthy uh, heir to the Gladiator name. Yeah, Which is why we settled on Gladiator. Well, that's good because the original Gladiator had those big fender flares that always made it look cool. Yep. It was part of the body. No idea where it's Turn, turned, man. Uh, maybe turn turn right? Turn right. I don't call that yet. But this heated steering wheel is kicking on. Oh, I it's, didn't even turn it on. It, oh, turn, it, it turns, turns on, turns on auto, automatically ah. if, the, if you start the car, um, the truck at 40 degrees or, or below. Yeah. Um, you can also turn that setting off if you so desire. But it's pretty nice. You know, you if it's... 20, 10 degrees below zero, snowing outside. You can just remote start the truck from yeah. inside your house. And then the heated seats here, heated steering wheel, they're already on. So very right. comfortable to, to get into the truck then. You're not, you're not freezing. We did on Gladiators, we actually widened the slots a little bit and made the slots slightly taller. And then if you look at this uh, big 
this kind of mesh behind the slots, we actually open it up more. It's a little bit coarser on Gladiator. And that helps get more airflow to the engine just to help with cooling to tow that best in class uh, 7,650 pounds. And then the silhouette itself, it's a very traditional Jeep silhouette, right? It's very boxy, it's very upright, but at the same time, Gladiator also has a very traditional uh, pickup truck silhouette, right? Very clearly defined tab as well as a very clearly defined bed. And uh, speaking of the bed, all Gladiators come standard with a five foot all steel bed features a dam. Well, that's good. I mean, this is, yeah, that, I really miss that Gladiator grill. That was one of my favorite truck grills. It was such yeah, a yeah, cool that was, thing. that was, that was cool. But, you know, we also wanted to give this, um, the new Jeep truck, uh, a face that's recognizable as a Jeep. Right. And, you know, most people, you know, they don't know Jeep ever made pickup trucks in the past. And if you were to show them a, an old Gladiator without Jeep badging on it, right. they'd be like, oh, what the heck is that? Who made uh, that, that's right? That's kind of military thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, uh, you know, by giving it kind of a Wrangler front end, the Wrangler style grill, uh, you know, we ensure that people will recognize it as a Jeep. Um, yeah. and, it, and it looks like a Jeep to, to you know, modern day um, customers. Well, that's cool. Your wheel wells on Gladiator is 44.8 inches, right? And we know that plywood sheets come in four foot by eight foot sheets. So obviously the plywood is not gonna fit in between the rear wheel wells. So what you do is you actually take that plywood, you actually put it on top of the rear wheel wells. And then when you put the tailgate in the mid gate position, that tailgate is gonna be level with the rear wheel wells. So then the plywood is gonna be supported in the front by the rear wheel wells and then the back by the tailgate in the mid gate position. So very easy, um, uh, very clever solution. We also have standard LED bed lighting. Uh, four standard tie downs. The two in the back are fixed, but then the ones in the front, they actually swivel and fold. So when you need to use them, you fold them out. And then when you don't need to use them, they fold flat in with depression stamped in the wheel well so that you can slide in cargo unobstructed. We've got some available features in the bed too, just to enhance versatility and functionality. We've got a soft roll up tonneau cover, a 115 volt power outlet, available spray and bed liner, and then our trail rail uh, tie down system, which is a rail based adjustable tie down system. Uh, you got sliding anchors and three rails. You got two on either side of the bed, as well as one in the front wall of the bed. <laughs> but no, this, this is great scenery, great mountain scenery. That's why I had the outside camera. I wanted to see all that cool stuff. Now I suppose we need to turn around somewhere right here next to these guys. That's the interstate. Or yeah, we'll see you turn in here. So I'll get in here. This handles nice, and this is nice and quiet. You know, that was always the thing about Jeeps in general. They always were a little bit loose, a little air noise, mm -hmm. and you didn't dare take them to a car wash because you got wet. So is this one? <laughs> this one sounds this much better. It, is it? It's it's very it's very watertight. Um, we added, you know, something we'd never done um, in Wrangler before, but we added on the new Wrangler, and we uh -huh. carried over to Gladiators. We actually added um, drain tubes in the pillars, okay. just like, just like on most regular convertibles. But, right. um, so we've done a lot, um, in terms of the ceiling and, uh, to, to help manage any, any sort of water. Well, so, that's good. Cause that was the only thing I had against them. And this is a longer wheelbase. This should be a good trader and machine. Yep. I did not like a two door Wrangler for trader. It was just way too wild. The four door did pretty good. Now this one's even longer. How much longer than a four door Wrangler? So is we are, this is 19 inches longer. Glider is 19 inches longer than a four door Wrangler. So 137 inch wheelbase. Okay. Um, and then that longer wheelbase obviously helps with stability when you're towing. It does, it does. And then just on-road driving dynamics too. It's a lot smoother. It's a lot comfortable. Yeah. More comfortable than um, um, than four-door Wrangler. You know, I've uh, up in uh, Detroit. You know, some of our roads are so bad. It's like driving yes. on the surface of the moon. <laughs> yeah. You're like and driving over these like craters. Yeah. 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 Uh, you know, craters that could swallow a small car. Um, and yeah, the Gladiator is just so smooth it just glides over those potholes so effortlessly yeah. well that longer wheelbase it helps with steering stability helps with the trailer stability oh yeah yeah i love all that i'm glad you had an extra piece to the back of the cab because you know mid-sizes aren't normally known for much room back there yep so we have the extra piece is great yeah we have the largest or the the best in class rear seat leg room that's any mid size that's truck mid size because mid size turns in nothing but a it's mom like popping the kids yeah and then you got it then you got the cross space <laughs> back there and it's like all right kids good yeah, luck i know it i know it <laughs> Oh, this is good. Actually, adults can buy this and, and set in it, which is good. Did we come up that road or? 
Yeah, okay. yeah. I wonder if that's right. actually go back or the other way. Well, we'll go. Yeah, lost. go. Yeah, let's go. Yeah. We'll go straight. We'll go get lost, and that'd be fun too. It's not a bad, not a bad place to get lost. Oh, no, and this is a class three receiver hitch on it. Uh, class four. Class four. Okay, well that's good. And it bore seventy was seven six fifty on the on the towing capacity. So in in this one, Rubicon, seven thousand okay. pounds. Oh, that's right. And then Rubicon. if you get if you get a Sport or a Sport S with our max tow package with the four ten axle ratio, okay. then that's where you get the uh, the seven thousand six hundred fifty okay. pounds. So what but, is Rubicon three fifty five rear end or what? Uh, four ten. Four ten. So so you still so with the max tow package on Sport, you get bumped up to the Rubicon axle ratio okay okay well that's good and then of course the manual transmission would be less towing because that's how that correct. works correct yeah just um you know to make sure that you have a long life on the clutch sure sure um, that's that's all i mean all you're i mean you're gonna right. you know you could probably we're rated at um i believe it's four thousand to forty five hundred pounds with the manual transmission okay um you know and you could you could go out there and you could you could probably you could do six thousand pounds but you wouldn't want to do it a whole bunch of times because then right. you're, you're really going to shorten the life of the clutch. Right. That's how a lot of people don't realize. And they took the asbestos out of the clutch. You took some of the life out of the heat resistance. And so, and the automatics lock up torque converters. You can do everything an automatic can do. You can shift trend. You can shift your transmission. Yep. So you do all that. So I, you know, I, that's what everybody complains about the, the manuals going away. I know you're a fan of manuals. I, uh, yeah. I, I was all, when I was 20, but <laughs> now I'm not. All, I've, <laughs> all, all four of my Jeeps are all manuals. Yeah. Um, I, uh, I don't think I'd ever buy uh, one with an automatic. Um, Was there a difference on curl ratios or when you're climbing rocks? It's, Is it's, it really a it's, difference? Uh, it's a little bit better with the manual. So with the manual transmission, uh, it's an 84 to 1 crawl ratio. And okay. then with the automatic, it's 77 to 1. Okay. So you like just kind of rare to climb. Well, I, mean, that's, I, I used salt truck for 10 years and I, I had customers in the mountains. They would not buy an automatic. They wanted to control the manual and the down, you know, down shift going downhill and control it. And then, you know, now they have no choice. Even in Rams, uh, big heavy duties don't have a manual anymore starting this year. Mm -hmm. So it's all kind of going that way. But yeah, I mean, I grew up with all manuals and I, I liked them as a kid, but now I'm kind of old and lazy and I like just let the, let the machine yeah, run. Yeah, I don't know. I think there's, I think there's just something, <laughs> I think there's just something very right and proper in the world about, about a stick shift in a, in a Jeep. Oh, okay. okay. Um, kind of like sports cars. You need to, you need to have fun with it. Total control of the vehicle. Exactly. But, <laughs> you know, but, you know, to your point, I mean, it used to be the manual transmission always gave you the better fuel economy than the automatic, but yeah. now it's usually the automatic that, that gives you the better fuel economy just because you've got more gears. Oh, sure. Well, that's how the, even your warranty on a manual, your clutch is only like a year warranty, where the rest of it's, you know, 36, three years or whatever the longest one is, even longer. Now, tell me about the diesel. Diesel's coming out next year. Next year. So, um, not only are you going to be able to get a brand new Jeep pickup truck, which you can now, but next year you're going to be able to get a brand new Jeep pickup truck with a diesel. Oh, that's good. So we're gonna have our uh, three liter turbocharged V6 Eco Diesel. That's the VM Eco Diesel out of yes, the 1500? Yes, oh, correct, awesome. yep. Awesome. It'll be paired with the eight-speed automatic. Okay. And it's gonna have 442 pound-feet of torque. Okay, well that's cool. Well, basically, you got the ZF transmission, which is basically German. I know you make yourselves now. You have the VM, which is Italian. So you got like a worldwide vehicle. Yep. And then right? we're and then we assemble <laughs> it in Toledo, Ohio, oh, that's USA. Awesome. So yeah, yeah it's the best um, of all the world. Parts from all over the all over the world. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. That's a uh, you know, everybody's been waiting for this for such a long time. I mean, I'm glad it finally came out. We all were going oh, crazy yeah. yep. waiting for this truck, and now it's here and it's fun and it's it's nice. There's so many nice things about. It. Of course, you know, being like the last one into the market, you had to come out with a super truck to make headway. I mean, you got the Jeep loyalists who will buy it no matter what, kind of like the Honda and Toyota people. They buy it, whatever gets, gets produced, but you know, you, you did a really good job with this thing. I'm really interested. I'll probably have it in a couple weeks, get the mounds, pull a big trailer, get Kelsey in there and let her go off-roading with it and get a really good review out of it. But at least we're in the mountains today. I must be going above the speed limit because I'm just barely moving. Let's see what, let's see what, the, let's see what it says the speed limit is. 30. So, yeah, I'm close yeah, to that. You're right. You're right there. <laughs> close enough. But it handles curved. That's got front and rear anti sway bar. Yep. Yep. And that's then good. and then coil sprung rear suspension front and rear uh, front and rear five link. Yeah. Uh, for both. So only mid sized truck to offer um, coil rear suspension. Everybody yeah. else does leaf springs, and you, know, you can really feel the difference if you're if you're kind of 
making a turn and you hit you hit a bump or a, or a rough patch of road yeah. with the leaf springs there's a strong tendency for that rear end to kind of kick out right okay. and yeah. um yeah. with the coil sprung rear suspension on gladiator it, it just makes the truck that much more stable well does the does this have mono beam front and rear solid axles yes solid okay. axles front and rear which okay that makes jeep people happy they love oh yeah because they can you know, still they thing. can still throw a two inch lift um yeah. 35 inch tires they can still all do that very easily yeah. with gladiator yeah, that's awesome. This handles really well. It is, I'm glad we've got a nice curvy road here, man. I'm having no problems with this puppy at all. Rack and pinion just moves, and it's got a good well, gauge it's, cluster. It's a, it's a uh, recirculating ball. Oh, it is? So it's still very old Well, that's school. like the only one out there. Yeah, else it, it, even it is. Even a half ton, you can't get that. That's and the reason, the, Well, the reason we do that is because of the solid front axle, right? Because you right. think about it, if you were to do a rack and pinion on a solid front axle, yeah. you'd have to have some kind of plunging steering column yeah. you know to account for for your axle well, articulation because you know this steers nice and tight that was always the thing about rack and pinion it's nice and tight mm -hmm. you know where the old truck style wasn't well this is good so that and that's something new i did not know that that is so cool so yeah we're still very we're still very old school um, with the axles and with the steering well you got a whole crowd of people that will like that and but but, it, but at the same time right there's tons of technology right you've got these big touchscreen radios you've got safety equipment like adaptive cruise control, blind spot monitoring. So oh, yeah. so you can still, it's still very old school and still very rugged, a very traditional Jeep yeah. in terms of what's underneath the chassis, but we've got all the modern tech and amenities that people expect from a new vehicle. Oh yeah, well uh, adaptive cruise control is my very favorite option. I love it. Oh, it's awesome, yeah. right? It's, it's you just, just, you just cool. set it, and then all you really got to yeah. do is steer. Well, I always pull you know? trailers, and it's so nice to have them to where they'll lock on somebody, and you go on I-25 through Denver, you can never use cruise control, and now you can. It's so cool. It's, it's I love Denver. I don't know where the hell are we? We're in Irondale, whatever that Idle, is. Idledale. It's got to be never. a place to turn around here somewhere. Yeah. But no, I'm, I'm, I'm liking this. And and the, um, the yeah, credit cards you're going to know that diesel's not out. We don't know what's on cost extra, what the option is. Yeah, no, I, no, I, we haven't. No idea on pricing yet. We'll yeah. figure that out um, over the next, um, you know, eight ten months. And that that new two liter eco diesel that's in the Wrangler won't be in this. It's not coming to this truck. Um, yeah, just the uh, Pentastar and uh, and then the future diesel. So, okay. but you never know, right? Yeah. You never know. Because I thought it was a big thing to put that in the Wrangler, so I thought surely it'd be another option for this truck, but I guess not. Yeah, we kind of we looked at it and um, you know kind of figured we. Our engineering team really felt like the Pentastar um, was the best fit for for Gladiator in terms of what it had to do from a from a towing and hauling standpoint, as well as uh -huh. on road and and off road too. Um, and um, you know, it also saves on complexity too when the when the plant is just have it just has to put put in one powertrain, right? Yeah, there you go. I mean, that makes it easy. But you never know in the future, so. I like the headlights on this. There's a lot, lot to like about this truck. I mean, it's cool. It has those little rock gliders, whatever they call them, in the corners underneath the cab, because that happens to you a lot. I have a lot of ATVs we take off road, and we're always riding the rails. Oh yeah, yeah. Yep. And that kind of helps with this. It's just such a long wheelbase. You need all the protection you can. And yep. You are going to ride some rock for this. Oh yeah, which is why you've got, why we've got full yeah. skid plates underneath, yeah. rock rails, so very well armored um, underneath on the chassis. Oh, this would be the ideal truck to have quadra steer because then you turn around. <laughs> those trails is pretty long. Water's there. It's got to come. It's got to come back. Yeah, I'm sure GM will sell it off cheap. Delphi's probably they got parts left over. But no, these are cool. Everybody likes to off-road with Jeep. I've got nephews that own Jeeps. I mean, that's they all go from Oklahoma all the way back to Colorado just to ride in all these trails we have out here. But everybody in Colorado that gets a Jeep, you know, you know they take it off-road. Oh well, off -road. you got you got access to some awesome off-road oh, trails out here, right? I mean. In Michigan, all we've got is you know a couple off-road parks, where, yeah. you know, which are usually pretty lame. Yeah. And then I mean, out here, you guys have the real deal, like all over the place. Oh, yeah, we're only a day away from Moab too. Yep. You got Grand Junction. There's there's trails all over. The you state. got you got Telluride and oh yeah, Ouray and and these Falcons. That's kind of quite the, the, tri the tire on these. I mean. I've seen several people go to Falcon. It used to be Falcon was known for the drifting cars. Mm -hmm. That's where they were all at. And now they're really getting big in the truck yeah, market. Yeah, they're kind of expanding into like the off-road tire and truck yeah. tires now. And um, yeah, these have been, the Falcons have been awesome on Gladiator. So yeah, so been, that, is that, do you guys test these tires, see which is the best all-terrain one? Or how do you figure out, because you know those oh, yeah. K2s I mean, the, were really the, big deal. The tire, the tire testing process, I mean, it, it takes about two years. Oh, yeah. Because uh, they've got to sure. do, they've got to do, um, 
usually they like to do two cycles of winter testing, yeah. of course summer testing. Um, there's a lot of testing involved in bringing a new tire to a vehicle. Oh yeah, I'm sure. But you know, we test out everything and um, you know, the Falcons really did a great job of um, from everything Gladiator is supposed to do. Um, well, they're great off-road. They're these are, you know, these are big 33-inch all-terrain well, tires yeah. and they're they're you know, they're really not that loud. Well, you don't hear them at all. Yeah, yeah, there's no whistle. I mean, I I have these mud tires. I got a lot of trucks. I have a collection of way too many in. Some of those tires, you can't hear yourself talking them. Yeah, right. It's just the these, constant yeah. drone all the yeah, time. Yeah, this is a very light, light sound coming out of them. And it looks like it's got a pretty good bite. Wish we had a chance to go off-road with this thing. Oh, yeah. I guess we could. Nobody's <laughs> around. We'll find, find a little trail up there. We'll really make it mad back at the base. We're all waiting for this truck. Comes back, just covering yeah. the mud. <laughs> so, very easy to use. Um, I also mentioned open-air freedom. So there is no other pickup truck on the market um, that is an open air vehicle like Gladiator, right? There's no other truck out there that you can take off the top, let alone take off the doors and fold down the windshield like you can with Gladiator. So um, when it comes to the top options, there are a couple different tops available. We've got our zipperless Sunrider soft top and then our three piece Freedom Top hard top, um, which is what you see here. And you can take out the Freedom panels above the front seats just like you can on Wrangler. But, I don't know what it looks. It looks a little better covered. Oh, I'm sure. So. I, I've got a Ram like that, second generation, four inch lift, three inch wide lift, and I always keep it covered in mud because it is like go. some girls got 33s. They're wider and all get out, but yeah, mud is just part of the patina that makes it look it, cool. Exactly. But yeah. No, this is handling very well. It's level around the corners. I love the anti sway. So many people understand that you need rear anti sway. That's what keeps the, the trucks without a load or a tendency to fly around the back end. That's yep. why I came out with let you know the uh, sway control. And that's a good thing, but this, you can't beat stabilizer bars, front and rear. I mean, you guys really know what you're talking about. Oh yeah, and, and we still, and then you can disconnect the front sway bar, right? Because yeah. then, because sway bars are great on the road, but when you're off road, they they kind of hinder your articulation, right? Yeah, especially on a solid axle, yep. you really need room. That's that's a very good thing to have. I wish more vehicles had that. You guys kind of, I don't even know if the ZR2 has that in the Chevy because I know the Ram the only Power Wagon. Ram, Ram Power Wagon and, Gla and Gladiator and Wrangler are the only three vehicles on the market that have electronic disconnecting front sway bar. Wow, that's, that's kind of bizarre. So, I mean, yeah, you can always add like, um, you know, an aftermarket solution with a manual disconnect, which no. yeah, that's fine, but you gotta, I've got some of my Wrangler, it's, you know, you gotta crawl underneath the vehicle and you gotta fiddle with some pins. Well, and, sure. You know, this is just push a button and, and you're you're done, right? Yeah. It's well, very convenient. Good that you own what, three or four Jeeps? Four, four Jeeps. See, look at that. That's the guy who should be in charge or, talking about gladiator once somebody knows what the hell they're talking about i always ask people that because you know, i always ask engineers if they have cdls i'm always asking them all these questions right but, you know you want somebody with experience so they can actually tell a difference and and you know i can feel a difference and i don't jeep i do more atv in the jeep but i have a lot of friends with jeeps and they're crazy people and i mean this is gonna make mopar rich because they all add something to them you know nobody keeps anything in stock when it comes to the off-road world and we have so many passionate jeep enthusiasts um you know on the jeep team on, yeah. on engineering on the the design side the styling side right i mean tons of people who who own jeeps and love their jeeps and when you kind of throw all that passion into a vehicle you you end up with something awesome like like this new gladiator oh yeah yeah that's side that town well i wanted to get on this first because this is the one i have not driven of all the trucks they had there today and i really wanted to try this out get a video out because this is just cool stuff i'm glad i got to talk to you I'm glad yeah you. happy to i love love talking about it. you know it's one of those things like i've been on working on this program for about two years now and yeah. like you know we couldn't couldn't talk to anybody about it. it's like oh what do you do and you got to be like ah oh, super secretive kind of like cia <laughs> style like oh yeah, you know really. just, just working on a, new, on a new vehicle right so <laughs> so i wasn't able to talk about it for so long and oh, now yeah. it's like I can talk about it, which is awesome. That is, I know it get built up anguish. I've talked to a lot of engineers, you know, they're just kind of frothed at the mouth, ready to go, <laughs> and they finally get to talk about their their work. And it's, it's just, it's, it's, it's a very cool job. You got a cool job. Oh, yeah, it's it's awesome. Um, but yeah, you're, I mean, you're right, like, you know, for those of us who work on it, like, this is kind of like it almost becomes like our baby, right? Because yeah. we, you know, put so much time and energy and effort into it, so you really, um, um, you really become attached to the to the program. Yeah, oh, I'm sure, I'm sure that it is. It's like BNC. Yeah, you can't talk to your wife, you can't talk to yeah, your neighbors. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's like you my, my, you know, I always, I always talk, I always talk to my dad, and you know, my dad would, you know, 
about a year ago, I'd be like, oh, like, tell me about the new Jeep truck. Like, when's it coming out? What's what the, what's it going to be called? What What's the name going to be? And yeah. I just had to be like, yeah, you know, Dad, I, I can't tell you that stuff. <laughs> yeah, you don't know who's got him wired. He yeah, all exactly. Spying on you. Yeah, you can't trust anybody in this business. <laughs> Oh, that's too, too, too cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's like there's a lot. I end up for some weird reason knowing a lot of secrets about the industry. And it doesn't do you any good. You can't talk about it. So why do people tell me things? I, it's, it does not help at all. But that's how things work out. People, you know, when they always want to ask questions and they want to do feedback. And I get involved in some of that. But, yeah, it just it, it's irritating. I can't talk to anybody about half the stuff I end up doing. And I can't imagine it being like being, you know, involved. Are you an engineer? By by training, I'm an engineer. Yeah, okay. and then I switched over to the marketing side about three years ago. Yeah. So that's why I get really into the technical details and everything. Is the military invading? What's all these tents? <laughs> Look at that little, little tent. Goodness. Tent city. Gracious, yeah. Maybe they are going to put us in little farms or something. <laughs> what are talking about? <laughs> oh, that's cool. That's cool. That's, yeah, I'm an old farmer, so I, I know a lot of farmer engineers are self-taught to come up with some great ideas. you got to have a lot of, what's that called, practicality. No, nah, it's, it's common sense. Most important thing an engineer can have is common sense. Oh yeah, yeah. But it's cool. So, do you have one of these as a test vehicle for yourself? I or? mean, I've I've I spent a lot of time behind the wheel of them, and I mean, I can pretty much get one whenever I want. So, yeah. I'm actually um, I'm actually going to be using one Memorial Day weekend um, to trailer a vehicle from Virginia back to Michigan. Oh, cool. A so, big trailer? Is this right turn or the next one? Um, I think I it's... I saw one Jeep go that way, but he may be lost. Yeah, I think, it, I, think, I think the Ford's okay. just up here. Cool. Well, that, um, did you, you get to take something to the Easter Safari at Moab? Or? Did. Uh, uh, manual transmission Gladiator Rubicon. It's a red oh, one. Okay, so, yeah. actually started in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and then kind of drove up, did some off-roading and a lot of dirt roads, back roads through southwestern Colorado, Cortez, Montrose. Oh, cool. Um, and then finally ended in Moab and did a did a day of wheeling in Moab before I sadly had to oh. go. I, I had to leave to go to New York for the for the auto show. Yeah. Uh, I yeah. wish I could have stayed. I always love going out to Moab. Oh, there is. And it's made for bigger vehicles. I ATV, so I do all these trails here. But Moab, I mean, you can take gigantic vehicles out there and have fun with them. There's oh, some, yeah. Some places yep. you can get that crazy. But, yeah, because the trails are just so wide open. Oh, yeah. Well, thank you. Uh, we've got this little gadget right here. This is our trail cam, uh, forward-facing on road camera. And that's gonna project right into the radio screen an image of what's in front of the vehicle. Um, so when you're out um, on an off-road trail, you're gonna be able to clearly see any obstacles in front of the vehicle. You're gonna be able to see rocks, um, logs, and overlaid onto the image on the radio screen is actually gonna be your tire path as well. And that tire path is dynamic. So as you turn the steering wheel, uh, the tire path is going to change, showing you which direction you're pointed in. Um, I actually found this camera to be incredibly useful when I was out in Moab a couple weeks ago. You know, out there you're going up these uh, these rock fins that are you know 35 plus degrees, and you can't even see the trail at all. You look through the windshield and you just see blue sky. You're like, where the heck am I going? Am I going to drive <laughs> off a cliff? Like, what's going to happen? And once you turn on that trail cam, you can still see the trail, um, even though through the windshield. You just see sky. Um, so very useful there. Uh, you can access it in any drive mode, including two-wheel drive. So uh, it can even be helpful in parking lot maneuvers, right? And we all know that Jeeps look better with mud and dirt on them, right? And you know that this guy is going to get muddy, it's going to get dirty. And that camera lens is probably going to get pretty darn muddy too, to the point where you probably aren't going to be able to see anything out of it. So what do you do when that happens? Um, you, know, you don't have to step out of the Jeep with a rag and wipe off the lens. There's actually a button right in the radio screen. You press it and there's an integrated washer right in the camera that's gonna, gonna wash off the lens. Perfect 2020 vision once again. So that kind of covers the 100% Jeep part, 100% um, truck. So I'm sure you guys have heard it before, but you know, one thing I can't stress enough is Gladiator isn't simply just a Wrangler with a bed tack on the back. Um, you know, four-door Wrangler can, can tow 3,500 pounds, and if we just stuck a bed on the back of four-door Wrangler, we'd be anywhere near 7,650 pounds of towing or 1,600 pounds of payload. So, Gladiator was literally engineered from the ground up to be a truly capable pickup truck. So